Hello, everyone. My name is Wei Yuhua. Today, I'm going to talk to you about our recent work in graph signal processing, using that to analyze our brain signal. This is a joint work with many of our collaborators from neuroscience. We live in a era of networks. From the state level, we have the network of energy transmission, which transmits the energy generated from energy producer to energy consumer. At the city level, we have the networks of highways, which connect cities to other cities. We have network of friends and co-workers. But probably the most complicated networks you and I have been engaging with is the network inside our heart, our brain, which defines who we are and what we do. Some of you may be confused why brain is a network, because brain is just a piece of tissue. Well, if we look at the surface of the tissue, there are lots of hues and bodies. And within these hues and bodies, there are brain regions consisted of neurons that have very similar functionalities. Therefore, these brain regions can be considered as nodes. For each of the brain regions, we can use imaging techniques such as functional MRI or EEG, which measures the amount of activity for each of the brain regions. If the brain regions serve as the node, what would be the edges? There are two main techniques for that, structure or functional. In structure network, we use imaging techniques such as diffusion MI, which traces the bouncing of water molecules inside our brain. This bouncing of water molecules can be considered as highways where information is passed. Alternatively, we can consider functional network, where for a pair of brain regions, we examine the similarity of the activities for these two brain regions. Since the signal is the observation on top of the network, and the network represents the similarity or relationship, it is very natural to think of there must be some relationship between the signal and networks. This is exactly what we are going to do here. Formally, we consider a network as a triplet with a set of nodes, a set of edges, and W represents the relationship for each of the edges. It represents how similar the activities are for the nodes connected by the edge. We use the shift operator S to encode the structure, and the only requirement we have for the shift operator is if I and J is not in the edge set, then the corresponding entry SIJ is going to be zero. Common choices of shift operators include adjacency matrix and Laplacian matrix. There has been a recent development in signal processing called graph signal processing, which tries to generalize conventional tools in time series analysis to more irregular domains, such as graph or networks. The interest of study is the graph signal, which can be considered as a vector representing the information for each of the nodes in a network. We then use the eigen decomposition of the shift operator to give us the eigen value and the eigen vectors. The graph Fourier transform is then defined as the inner product between the eigen vector and the graph signal. This measures the coefficient for each of the graph frequency components. We can then also use the inverse graph Fourier transform, which reconstructs the actual signal in the graph domain using the eigen vector and graph Fourier coefficients. The most important property about graph Fourier transform is when the underlying graph is a directed cycle, for example, the hour within each day, then the graph Fourier transform is the same as discrete Fourier transform. Therefore, similar as in Fourier analysis, GFT also has an underlying module of variation with respect to the underlying structure. For example, if our brain has two modules, one at lower left and the other at upper right, if we look at the low frequency component in the GFT, then it can be considered as a signal that is highly aligned on the network. If we examine the high graph frequency component, then it is highly misaligned, it is highly flexible, meaning that components or nodes highly connected can still have very different signals in the GFT domain. With that, we can define graph filters which decompose a given graph signals into different components, low frequency, middle frequency, or high frequency. As example, 
if our underlying structure, network structure, is defined by this network, and we want to decompose these graph signals into three pieces, then we would have the low frequency component, middle frequency component, and high frequency component. The low frequency component is going to be highly similar on the network, meaning nodes connected in the network tend to have very similar signals. And the high frequency component, on the other hand, is going to be highly misaligned. Nodes highly connected can still have very different signals. Middle frequency component is going to be something in between. The interest of our study is we want to use these graph signal processing tools to find if this can help us to explain how human beings learn a new task or switch their attention, and whether this will provide some novel interpretation about the individual differences in human beings. To do that, we consider a bunch of different experiments. And the first experiment is motivated from playing guitar. We know some of us are very good at learning a new task. Some of us may learn how to play a guitar within a few hours. Well, other people, they need to build a foundation first, and then they can learn how to play guitar later on. This experiment is motivated by that. And we have a bunch of participants. The participants are required to respond to stimulus on the screen by pressing a corresponding button using their middle finger. For example, if the number three the square is highlighted, then the participants need to respond to number three using his middle finger. The next square in the sequence is going to be highlighted once the previous one gets pressed correctly. In this example, the signal is the functional MRI, and the network measures the functional network similarity using the functional MRI measurements. The first question we want to ask is whether the decomposition in graph signal processing domain gives us something interesting? The answer is yes. If we consider low frequency, middle frequency, and high frequency in a graph domain, then what we found is the middle frequency, there's not much left if we consider the average across the subjects in two different experiments. Well, in low frequency and high frequency, it's the opposite. There are highly similar areas that are active for different subjects and in different experiments as well. With this, we want to ask the next question. What if this means the low frequency and high frequency components are the pieces of information that contribute actively during a learning task? The answer is also yes. To do that, we consider variance of signals, because variance of signals has been shown to be related to active learning. And what we found is the variance of low frequency and high frequency components tend to be very high. This means the contribute more to active learning. And the middle frequency, this variance, is not very high. It means the contribution from middle frequency is low. With this in mind, we want to ask the next question, whether this low frequency and high frequency actually tells about individual differences between human beings in active learning. The answer is also yes. We found this at the start of learning your signal is actually not highly aligned on the network. You have some signals that is misaligned, that is flexible on the underlying network. As you become more and more familiar with how to play a guitar, the signal gets more accumulated on the low frequency components. They become more aligned. In the same time, what we also found is when subjects are unfamiliar with the task, it is the high frequency component, sorry, it is the low frequency component the signal that is aligned on the networks that makes the subject better at learning a new task. And when the subject becomes highly familiar with the task, it is the high-frequency component, the signal that misaligned with the underlying network that makes subject better at learning their task. To combine the story, what we found is once we face an unfamiliar scenario, it is better to have low-frequency component, alignment part. This alignment part actually can be considered as the big picture, and it gets accumulated as we become more and more familiar with the task. And once we are highly familiar with the task, if we want to further improve our skill, it is better for us to have the high frequency component, the misalignment, which can be considered as the fine tuning. We consider a different experiment, which is motivated from switching attention. 
We know some of us are very good at switching attention. We can talk to our grandmother in the previous second and then start to write an email. Well, some of us are not very good at this. This experiment is motivated by this, where we consider different types of images. For example, we have a triangle consisted of square and a circle consisted of crosses. When the image is green, the subjects are asked to respond to the smaller pieces, which are going to be square in this case. And when the image is white, the subjects are asked to respond to the big picture, which is going to be a circle in this example. We designed two different sequences. In the first sequence, the subject always responds to the big picture, all the smaller details in all of the images. And in the second sequence, the subject needs to switch your attention between smaller details and, high and big pictures. The signal in this case is still function MRI, and the network is actually the structure network, representing the number of neurons between a pair of regions. We ask the same question. Why do graph signal processing tell us something about the differences? Why some people are good at switching their attention? And what we found is the higher concentration in the high frequency component, the subject tends to perform slower in switching their attention. Recall in the previous experiment, what we found was when the subjects are unfamiliar with the task, the higher signal concentration on the high frequency component, the misalignment part, the subject tends to perform slower. And in this case, the subject tends to switch their attention slower. So it's kind of similar observations in different experiments. As a summary, in the past 15 minutes, I tried to explain to you our recent work in graph signal processing to be applied to brain signals. What we try to do is to examine the association between brain signal and brain network. We use graph signal processing in graph transform to do this, and we consider the brain spectrum. This reviews many exciting results about this. For example, we can have different level of contribution from different graph frequency components to an active learning task. We also have the fact that different brain spectrum would contribute differently whether you are familiar or unfamiliar with the task. This can also provide some novel insights about why some subjects are faster at switching their attention. Well, I hope this gives you an introductory review of the thing we have been doing at uh, LLAB, and uh, thanks for your attention.